Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We have a special guest on the line from the Brooklyn Nets, Garrett Temple. Going on? What's going on, fellas? Well, welcome, sir. Hey, Garrett. First and foremost, you know we love our Brooklyn Nets, so I just want to shout out to you and the team. So I know there's been a lot of controversy about NBA returning. What are your thoughts on the NBA returning? Uh, first of all, appreciate y'all having me. Big fan. Um, I think it's each individual's choice, honestly. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, this is our job. Uh, but I do believe that we have a, an opportunity for the guys that do want to go down there and play to keep the conversation going. Um, you know, I've, I've had a good amount of talks with a couple of vets that I really respect, um, just trying to gauge their, their viewpoint. And um, what I thought is going down there gives us that opportunity, um, not to necessarily be a distraction like some people think, but honestly to keep the conversation going. But I wanted to hear other, other viewpoints. And um, most people have told me that they, they think the same thing. But again, I support anybody that doesn't want to go for whatever reason. Um, and, you know, I, I'm going to use my platform to definitely push the message forward. I'm glad you said that because I do not understand the logic of people saying the NBA will be a distraction of it. There hasn't been protests through sports before, as if athletes can't participate in activism. If anything, y'all are going to keep the spotlight on what's going on out here in these streets. I don't, I don't get the whole the NBA will be a distraction thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I can understand what they're saying because sports in general are a distraction from everyday life. So, you know, sometimes you want to watch sports to just not put it on CNN uh, just to get your mind off or whatever. As basketball players, we hoop. And when we get on that court, we don't think about anything else that's going on in our lives. You know what I'm saying? So it serves as a good distraction most of the time. And as black people, you know, sometimes all the, all the stuff that's been going on been happening to us the last 400 years since we've been on this, on this uh, you know, piece of land. You, you may need a distraction, something to get your mind off of what's going on. So uh, I, I can understand where, they, where they're going with that. But at the same time, like I said, because we're 75 percent black and we believe in what we believe in, we have a chance to really continue to push that um, through the game that we play. And that's what that's what I plan on doing. Now, in Brooklyn in particular, oh, I was going to say a lot of the protests are outside of the Barclays, which is where you guys play. So what are your thoughts on that? And I saw that Joe Sai had a comment about having the, that be a meeting place for people. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't see Joe's comment, but I actually have a teammate, uh, a white teammate, Joe Harris, who lives right next to Barclays. So every time he goes on, on his uh, rooftop, he can see it, you know, and uh, he's definitely an ally. Let me throw that out there. So he's actually the type of guy that's looking down there like, man, I, I see a lot of white people, but I don't know if they're really in it, you know, to help or if they're just trying to, get an Instagram picture so they can post. Um, I, think, I think it's great that protests are happening, especially around Barclays. Um, you know, Brooklyn Nets, the NBA in general is a pretty progressive league, but our, our team is very progressive in the way that we think. Um, we've set up some Zoom calls with certain people, Van Jones, um, things of that nature, to, to get a perspective, uh, to get ideas about what we can do. Um, and Joe and Claire Sy are very supportive in whatever we want to do in terms of uh, trying to fight this social injustice. Now, it does open back up and you guys do play. Now, whoever wins the championship, is there really like an asterisk by that championship? Because, I mean, it's, it's a shortened season. It's, they cut out a bunch of teams. Is, is that a real win or is it kind of like an asterisk? Nah, I mean, it's going to be an asterisk, but I think it's a positive one, bro. I mean, if you can go through all of this and still stay focused enough to win a championship, I, I think that says a lot about you. A lot of teams, you know, some teams are going to be without – Certain players, you know, Avery's not playing for LA, who, who he's a starter. Um, you know, people are going to be without certain players, and obviously, some teams aren't in it. But just being real, the eight teams that aren't in it are not competitive teams in terms of, you know, these are teams that you should have beat if you were a playoff team. So, what you mean the Knicks like ain't going to beat them? You just going to beat the Knicks? Come on, trash man. The Knicks like that? That's what you're trying to say, Jared? Wait, is that what you said? <laughs> Garrett. Come on, man. Garrett, huh? Hey, I'm just being real. The eight teams that's not in it basically didn't have a chance to make the playoffs. So the schedule is actually going to be tougher, those eight games that we're going to be playing there. So, uh, and plus going through all of this, man, I, I think the asterisk, if it's there, needs to be a positive one. But we're going through a lot. Um, and we're going mm -hmm. to try to help, help salvage, have salvage the, the U.S. economy, man. 
Yeah, since you brought up the Knicks, Garrett. Okay. I was gonna say, since you brought up the Knicks, <laughs> what do you think I is the responsibility? The yeah, you did. Um, what do you think is the responsibility of putting out a statement also from the, the team's ownership, like with James Dolan and the email that he sent out to his, his staff and then that being made public and then not wanting to put out a statement. What do you think about that? Do you think that is something that should be a given or you think it's not necessarily important? Yeah, if you played for the Knicks and you've seen that, wh how would you feel? I haven't even seen it, uh, uh, but I can imagine. I, I, would, I would much rather play for somebody uh, like Joe Sy or somebody like the president of Indiana Pacers um who said black lives matter who stood up who put out a statement um there's somebody that doesn't want to put out a statement supporting us just period point blank i think that um shows what type of leadership people have uh where their values are and personally you know i wouldn't want to play for somebody that has those type of values so i think it may affect um you know in some in some situations it may affect free agency you know we've had discussions like that uh, but everybody has their individual choice at the end of the day, you know. But in terms of me, I, I, I love playing for Brooklyn, the Brooklyn Nets, because of the, the governors that we have on our team. We, could, we say governors now instead of owners. Let, 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 me stop, let me stop saying that, you know. I don't like that. Mm -hmm. Listen, what is the great challenge? That don't got nothing to do with sweatpants, right? <laughs> what? <laughs> this dude is crazy. Um, is that what you want nah, to see, Charlamagne? Uh, nah. <laughs> They don't have nothing to do with sweatpants, bro. So the great challenge is a challenge me and a couple of my boys, um, four of my friends talked about trying to figure out a way to honestly allow white people or, or give white people a way to have empathy because they can't switch with us, you know? So you can't do a, 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 live, a, a life switch um, with your white neighbor up in Jersey, Charlamagne. It just ain't gonna happen, right? So how can they, find a way to walk, not, not walk in our shoes, but maybe um, gain the emotions or, or find out things that, that we go through every day. So we think the best way uh, is to watch movies or if you're a reader, read books. And true stories and, and, and not necessarily fiction stories, more, more so true stories where uh, emotions can, can come. You know, we watch movies, we cry, we, we laugh, you know what I'm saying, we get angry. So when you watch a movie, certain things happen. So we figure, you watch Fruit Bell Station, if you don't feel bad, um, you know, after uh, Michael P. Jordan gets shot, there's something wrong with you. You know what I'm saying? You watch Just Mercy. Absolutely. If you can't, if you can't, um, as a white person, it's probably so far fetched that you had a family barbecue and with 30, 40 people there and you get accused of murder, you know, five, 10, 20 miles away and you get sent to jail and put on, you know, put on death row for that many years. So. Uh, watching those type of movies and honestly just learning history, uh, those those two things coinciding, we think can help create uh, a little bit of that empathy that that's so much needed in the society today um, to help help Black Americans get through what we get through. All right. Well, Garrett Temple's here. We'll talk to him some more when we come back. Of course, he plays for the Brooklyn Nets. 800-585-1051. When we come back, I want to know how it's going to be to play with no fans. Because I was watching the wrestling match with no fans. I ain't gonna lie, it was trash. It was, it was trash. It was, it was horrible. But we'll talk to him when we come back. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We're talking with Garrett Temple from the Brooklyn Nets, or as you would say, our Brooklyn our Nets. Our Brooklyn Nets, right. And, you know, I was asking, <laughs> if you play with no fans, and you know the fan is your energy, it, it wants to get you going. Can you play with no fans? Like I said, I was watching a wrestling event, and they had no fans, and it was like, to see the wrestling fans going, and it was like, there's, there's, there's nobody there. Like, like, could you do that? Can you still get energy? Is that going to be whack? Nah, we can still get energy, man. Because, you know, you know, Hoopers, we grew up playing with no fans, bro. You know, we play in the gym, five on five. The fans are the cats trying to trying to get on the court next. You know what I'm saying? So you, um, you talking shit, you doing what you do. Uh, that's where you get your energy from, from, from your teammates. Um, it's actually going to be more people in the gym than we, than we used to. You know what I'm saying? We got seven, eight teammates on the bench, coaches and stuff like that. So uh, it's going to be different, but I think because the it's going to be like the AU tournament, man. We playing at Wild mm -hmm. World of Sports. I remember playing there when I was 12, 13, 14 years old. So mm -hmm. we're going to take it back. Uh, it's going to be different, but I think the change in venue, if we were playing in, in Barclays or MSG, it'd be totally different. You know what I'm saying? I, used, I played in the D-League 
and playing with like 100 fans in, in Staples is weak. So I understand what you're saying, but since the, the situation will be different, I think we'll be all right. Isn't it a part of you mentally that has to block out the, the crowd anyway, though, when, you, when you're on the court? Yeah, but it's a little tough when you're in Utah to block out the crowd um, or when you're in places where they just, you know, saying what they're saying. But, yeah, that, that's the truth. You know, when you're at the free throw line, you're trying to, you know, think about shooting them free throws with nobody, nobody there. Uh, but it's still, it's still going to be different, you know what I'm saying? You try to block out the crowd, but you still see the people, you know what I'm saying? You're just trying to focus. So Garrett, I'm interested to see what it's going to be like. How important is activism to you and, and your family? Huh. Very important. So, I mean, just a quick, uh, so not, you know, think of my family. My grandpa from back is from Mississippi and went to Southern University in Baton Rouge, HBCU. In the early 50s, he tried to go to uh, LSU to get his master's degree. Now, this is the early 50s. Those of y'all that know, you know, black people weren't getting master's degrees. A lot, a lot of black people weren't getting master's degrees, especially in the South in the 50s. So LSU was like, nah, bro, you can't come here. Um, because of that, he was a Thurgood Marshall, had a class action lawsuit against the public universities in the South. And he was about to get on them with that. The, the state found out, so they appropriated funds for him to go anywhere else except the state school. So he ended up getting bred to go to Michigan State. He went to Michigan State. And uh, my dad was born in 52. And he remembers him walking the stage or whatever, right? So fast forward, I'm gonna say graduated in 54, fast forward 16 years later, my pops, uh, goes to his school with white people for the first time in 1969. And it's like, remember the Titans. Him, he, he's the star, star black player. Britney Spears' father, the singer Britney Spears' father is the star white player. And they play, they play football, they win a state championship, go undefeated, just like the damn movie, right? So the next year, my grandpa pushes him to go to LSU, the same school that denied him from getting his master's degree. But he was like, you know, I, I think it's best if you go there uh, to, to help blacks, you know, have, have a chance to get there. So he signed a letter of intent, went there. And uh, his first weekend on campus, uh, he went to a few bars with a couple of teammates. They, they didn't let him in. Um, he went to a restaurant and the, the cook told him, we don't serve niggas here. Mm. Damn. 17 years old. So my pops was like, had the best response. He said, I don't eat niggas. I ain't order no nigga. I, I, I want a shrimp pole. <laughs> 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 so that's, that's the start of, you know, if y'all have heard of David Duke, he was the Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course, he, of course. He, he was a junior when my dad was a freshman. They got into a few debates. Uh, while at school. Um, so he went through a lot, but bomb threats, playing at Tennessee, Ole Miss, y'all can imagine what it's like playing in the South. Mm -hmm. uh, Hell yeah, especially Mississippi, Lord so have mercy. Mississippi, Vanderbilt, he got in a few fights on the court, obviously. Teammates doing what they're doing, notes under the door. And he was the only black player for all four years at LSU. He integrated wow. the program, was the only, only black player all four years there. His older sister, cried when he signed a letter of intent because she went to LSU. And in 68, when MLK died, she was a part of a group of black students that went up and pulled the flag down the half mask because they wouldn't bring the flag down the half mask. So she knew what he was going into. She cried and uh, he, he ended up having to go through what he went through. Um, so because of that background and how, how I was raised, you know, social, social injustice, um, helping our community, is very, very much at the forefront of, uh, of what I like to do and what I like to, you know, push forward with my platform. Does your father hate white people? <laughs> he don't hate white people. He has he has a reason to, but he doesn't hate he doesn't hate them. Um, he um he don't trust them. He he understands. I disagree. I, I disagree. He don't trust because he's, he's an entrepreneur. He's the he's the the epitome of entrepreneur. Real estate. Mm -hmm. Um, he does a, like a lot of group homes a lot of service work in the community. Um, and we live in Baton Rouge where it's 50, 55% black, 45% white. But obviously we know the wealth gap and we know who most of the people who got all the money. So you gotta do work, you know, 
So he mm-hmm. he doesn't hate them. He he trusts you know he trusts people. Uh, right. In general, you know what I'm saying. But he <laughs> understands where what, what he had to go through, and he understands right. where he you know where he came from. So he definitely put that in us uh, to be smart about things. Yeah. Right. Well, now, that I, is I the great. Played, um, okay. I was going to say, aside from the great challenge, another thing that you've been doing is studying for the LSATs to be yeah, a lawyer. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I figured I was going to be chilling for a few, two or three months. Uh, been thinking about going to law school for the last four or five years. I wanted to get my MBA. I graduated in business, but my dad was like, you know, you need to get a law degree. That's, that's, that's more prestigious than an you know, MBA. So I was like, all right, let me let me see. And then I started studying and people started asking me about it. So now Joe Side telling me I need to go to Yale Law School. I'm like, damn, <laughs> can I get into Yale with a <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I need you to pull some strings, bro. But I think, you know, basketball is just what I'm doing right now. It's only a part of my life. Obviously, the ball's gonna stop bouncing. And uh I, I learned I've I've known that since I come, came into the league. But I wanna do something to gain knowledge to maybe be a prosecutor one day because prosecutors got so much damn power in this country. You know what I'm saying? Um, Mm -hmm. Maybe be a governor one day, but just be in a situation where I have a lot of options to try to do things to help. Uh, Because I think, you know, laws need to be changed. And if I could be part of that change, then uh, I'm trying to do it. Now, do you think you, I'm watching and I've seen you, you play for like nine different teams. So do you think that this is the fit right here with the Nets? Because I've seen you, and then you got to talk about how you grinded because you went down to the G League a couple Man. of times. You bounced back up. Like, you, they've been bouncing you around. Is this your perfect fit right now? Man, I, I think so. I think so. You know, I'm a vet in this league now. So, um, so my story, I played in the D League. I wasn't drafted. Uh, I went to LSU. Uh, my freshman year, we went to the Final Four. We played with Big Baby Davis. Grew up with him. Tyrus Thomas, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, Marcus Thornton, Brandon Bass. So, all of those guys drafted in NBA. Um, it's crazy that, that I'm still the one still playing, you know, nobody would have guessed that. Uh, mm-hmm. but after going through the D league, playing on five different teams, my first two years going to Italy, you know, getting cut a few times. Um, Sacramento was a good spot for me. That was my first spot. Well, you know, Washington was my first spot for Sacramento. I got a nice contract. Uh, Memphis was decent, but we weren't, we weren't making the playoffs like we were supposed to, uh, went to LA and then Brooklyn wanted me. So I felt like. This is a situation with obviously uh, Katie coming back next year, ca- having Kyrie here, and having the uh, the organization. Um, I, they really fit. That really fit me. So, you know, I, I'm taking on my role. I think I'm. I may be like having my best, my best uh, season statistics wise or whatever, mm-hmm. whatever. So, you know, COVID kind of messed that up, but we're gonna try to bounce back. Uh, but I, I love it here in Brooklyn, man. I was surprised. I, I was surprised. I wasn't a big fan of New York. I was. Mm-hmm. Why not? Man, I'm, I, I wasn't a big fan of New York in general. I was like, man, Hatton, all we do is go to go to the, the uh, hotel, and then I'm like, all oh, these big buildings. Man, I'm, I'm from the south. I like green grass and, and a yard. And <laughs> that's right. So that's, that's right. why I like Brooklyn, though. That's why I like Brooklyn, though. It's it's a little more than than just the city. You know, what I'm saying where I live in Brooklyn. So uh, maybe if I get enough money, I can move out there to where Charlemagne at, and maybe get leave a bigger yard. But uh, yeah, I, I like Brooklyn. Man. Right. The organization dope. I like the city. <laughs> You need keep, it Brooklyn, is, keep it Brooklyn. Keep it Brooklyn. Jersey is beautiful. Like we got, I got, I got, I got a, a few. Where I'm moving to, I actually got four acres. So, damn, I need that. Well, and I love being degree. in Brooklyn. Yeah. Have you been here? Have you been? <laughs> <laughs> have you been hearing the fireworks in Brooklyn, Gary? The fireworks been crazy. The fireworks <laughs> been crazy. Um, I'm like, what is that? At, I mean, I hadn't heard it at no 5 a.m. Maybe I sleep too hard. I hear people saying they heard it till 6 a.m., 7 a.m. I, you know, me and my girl, we hear it till like 1, 2. Uh, yeah, but when I'm two. out, I'm out. Yeah, so I, I've, been, I've been hearing them, though. I'm, I mean, I thought it was illegal to have fireworks in, in New York City. <laughs> Everybody been right. saying that. Everybody been saying that. I want to ask one final question. Mm-hmm. Oh, I want to ask one final question. Do you think athletes have a responsibility to, to use their platforms to speak out at a time like this? I personally do. Um, I feel like ap- athletes have a responsibility to speak out on whatever they believe in because of the platform they, they, they've been given. Uh, 
So if you're not big on trying to speak out against police brutality, if that's just not your lane, then speak out on whatever you believe. I, I think it's, you know, my obligation to be the voice for the voiceless. Uh, I think I've been given this opportunity for a reason. You know what I'm saying? So personally, that's my belief. You know, I, I don't think we've just, you know, been given this platform for no reason just to chill and do whatever we want to do and just worry about ourselves. I think we got to be selfless in the fact that we got to speak for people that can't speak for themselves and uh, and use that platform. So I definitely believe that. All right. All right. Well, we appreciate you for checking in, Garrett. And hopefully I'll get Peace to come King. to some games this Wow, well, it doesn't look like I'm gonna get to some games. Yeah, this not year. this maybe season. Maybe next year. Maybe next year I'll get to some more games, man. So are you officially a Nets fan, Andy? Are you officially a Nets fan? I, I, I support the Nets all the time. I go to more Nets. I, I think I've been to maybe three Knicks games, and I've been to about maybe 20 Nets games. So, so you, you are a Nets, Nets fan, fan or a Knicks fan? What are you? I'm confused. I don't. He's bi. Am, he's bi. He's bi, bro. He's bi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a New York fan at the end of the day. I'm a New York fan. That's what I am. There's plenty of bi New Yorkers, sir. Yes, All right. Yes. We're listening, Gary Andy. Temple. Are you a Nets Thank fan? You, brother. <laughs>